In this video, we provide the solution to question number seven for practice exam number three for math 1220. We have to set up and simplify the integral that will measure the length of the parametric curve, x equals e to the t cosine of t, y equals e to the t sine of t, as t ranges from zero to pi. We have to set up the integral. We do not have to evaluate it. So we're looking for arc length, so we're going to use our standard arc length formula, um, the integral of ds. Now, in this situation, because we have a parametric function, we can adapt it because uh, the general formula, right, is you take the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, which this actually suggests as we modify this into parametric form, we're going to take the derivative of x there, so e to the t cosine t. Um, then we have to square it, of course. We also are going to take the derivative of the y, e to the t sine of t, square it. This all sits inside of the square root. We're going to integrate with respect to t, and then told us the bounds. We're going to go from 0 to pi in that situation. So we've now set up the integral, but the instructions do specifically say we have to simplify it. So my strategy is going to, um, well, I have, a, I, have a, I have to take the derivatives of these things here. By the product rule, you're going to get a sum of a couple things. So let's take a look at that. With the first one, we take the derivative of et cosine of t. Uh, by the product rule, you're going to get two terms there. The derivative of et is itself, so you get et cosine of t. Uh, then when you take the derivative of cosine, you're going to get a negative sign, so you get negative e to the t sine of t. Uh, we have to square both of these things. Now, when you take the derivative of e t sine, you're going to get something very, very similar. The derivative of e to the t is, again, e to the t. Uh, then you're going to get the derivative when you take a sine. You're going to get e to the t cosine of t. Square that. This all sits inside of the square root dt. So we're going to FOIL each of those things. Uh, so FOILing the first one, um, you're going to end up with an e to the 2t cosine squared t. Uh, you're going to get negative e to the 2t uh, cosine of t sine of t. And then for the next one, you're going to get a positive e to the 2t sine squared t. Uh, for which, well, we're not quite done yet. I do want to note here that we have a cosine squared and a sine squared. Uh, that's going to combine together to give you just a Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So since they both are divisible by e to the 2t, we're going to just get an e to the 2t there. E to the 2t there. Uh, but then for the next one, when you FOIL that out, you're actually going to get something very similar. You're going to get e to the 2t uh, sine squared. You're going to get a plus uh, 2 times, and I forgot to write a 2 over here. There should be 2 there. Um, you're going to get a 2 plus 2e to the 2t um, sine of t cosine of t. And then you're going to get a e to the 2t cosine squared of t. This thing looks huge. And so all of this is under the square root. It looks massive, but it's going to simplify super nice. Uh, so also notice we have another e to the 2t sine squared. We have an e to the 2t cosine squared. Those will likewise combine together. Uh, when you add them together, it's sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Um, I also want to point your attention to the fact that we have a negative 2e to the 2t cosine t sine t, but we have a positive 2e to the 2t sine t cosine t. Those things are opposite, but uh, but negative. one's positive, one's negative. So they're actually going to cancel each other out. And so when you simplify all of this stuff, right, this thing is going to become, I'll put it up here, I'm going to have space. It looks way more scary than it really is. You're going to end up with a e to the 2t from the this one right here. Uh, the blue part's canceled out. Then you're going to get an e to the 2t right here, dt, for which if you combine those together, you're going to get the square root of 2 times e to the 2t. And notice, of course, e to the 2t is just e to the t squared. And so when you simplify this thing, you actually end up with the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of e to the t dt. You do not need to evaluate the integral, but it's like, that's not a hard evaluation. Um, you just have to set it up and simplify it. And as crazy as it looked, it actually simplifies very, very nicely. So much that I almost want to evaluate it, but we won't because we won't get any credit for doing that here.